Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Jessica McDonald. I am a knitting pattern designer and this is my knitting podcast. I am coming to you from a tiny town in the mountains of Idaho where I live with my husband and four children and various pets and things. Uh, yeah, so it's been a really long time since my last podcast episode. It's been really, really busy for me this summer, so I haven't been able to film as often as I like. I was also working really hard to finish my book, which is now done, and I'll tell you about it as we go. Um, I actually filmed this episode last week, but the only time I had to film it was after the kids were in bed at night and the sun had already gone down, so the video was pretty grainy, especially towards the end. So I'm going to refilm it here now, but there is going to be a section where I'm going to have to reuse the video that I took last week because I made a set of hat and mittens for the red scarf fundraiser and I've already mailed those off. So I'm going to have to use the video from last week, which is not going to have as good of lighting. So it's going to be a little bit grainy, but hopefully you can, you can see well enough. You might hear my kids downstairs. Uh, my two girls are sick now, and my two boys are feeling just fine, and they're making a ruckus down there. I've got the second Lion King movie on right now. We watched the first one yesterday. Aiden is two, and it was the first time he's seen Mufasa die. He's just standing there with his hands over his mouth, horrified, watching that scene. Maybe a little young for that, but anyway, they're sick. We went to visit my family over this last weekend and um, picked up a fun new bug to bring home. So our last week of summer is going to be sick kids and then we'll start school. So this is a bit of a lengthy introduction. Now let's get into my projects. So I'm going to be showing you three finished objects today and then there will also be a couple, the hat and the mittens from that I recorded the other day. So I guess there's going to be five finished objects today, but I'm not going to show you any works in progress today. So it's all going to be FOs. First of all, there is Silver Birch is now done. You can see I'm wearing it. You've seen this one a lot. If you are a usual watcher, you've seen this one a lot. So it's finally done. You can see the sleeves are done. I, I am very distracted, aren't I? So I should probably start off by telling you that you can find my patterns on Ravelry and my website, links to which are in the description box below. And you can also sign up for my newsletter in the description box below. I'm not a very good um, introduction person, so let's let's go back to Silver Birch. So Silver Birch is a drop shoulder, modified drop shoulder, cabled and textured sweater. I knit mine to a mid-hip length, which is what the instructions are, but if you wanted to wear this over dresses, you could crop it a bit. I do like to wear it over dresses as well, but it's a little bit long, so it's not... I do like wearing it over dresses because it's very comfortable and cozy, but I think it would look better if it was a bit cropped instead of long, but I'm gonna wear it with jeans most of the time, so I'm wearing it with jeans right now. So I wanted to knit it longer. But anyway, Silver Birch. It is knit in Devar Nature Ulysse, which is a sport weight yarn. And yeah, it has a crew neckline. It's got a fold it over collar, it's got um, these cuffs fold over to mimic the fold over collar and then it has these cables and different textures here and here. So it's really enjoyable to knit. It's really simple, really simple and straightforward. I have everything is charted so if you don't know how to read a chart you will have to learn how to read a chart but I do have a tutorial on how to read a cable chart which is in the tutorial section, and I'll put a link in the description box as well so it's easy for you to find. So if you wanted to make silver birch and learn how to read a cable chart, I can teach you how to do that 
in that video. Just giving a phone call. Um, so, yeah. Silver Birch is in Forest, which is my latest book, which is currently available for pre-order. So you can pre-order Forest, the print book, and I'll send you the ebook as a pre-order bonus so that you can cast on right away. Or if you just want the ebook, you can just buy the ebook on both Ravelry and my website. And um, that's the quickest way you'll be able to make this pattern if you want it. The designs in Forest are going to be exclusive to the book for a little while. I am planning to start releasing them this winter. I'm going to stand up to show you the whole sweater. There we go, and there you can see the whole sweater. It's a little bit messy because my kids have been in this room. Ignore that, just look at the sweater. So you can see the cables, the center are a little bit different than the cables here on the side. And then the texture here, this is just um, moss stitch, I think. And this is double moss. So it's, they're two different textures, but they're both just really simple knit pearl textures. And it's really easy to knit. The back looks exactly the same as the front. Um, the only difference is the shaping in the neckline. And then you pick up for sleeves right here. And it's just a really simple, slim-fitting stockinette sleeve. Um, I've actually got a blog post I wrote on how to adjust your sleeve length for your drop sleeve pullovers. Let's sit back down again. When you're knitting a drop sleeve sweater, the amount of ease you choose to knit it with affects where this line ends up, so this is the edge of the shoulder here. This is where you pick up for the sleeves. If I chose to knit it with more ease, it would be a little bit lower. If I chose to knit it with less ease, it would be a little bit higher. So that's going to affect the length that you need to knit your sleeve to, and you really want to have a perfect length on your sleeve, otherwise it's going to look like you just pulled the sweater out of your big brother's closet. And I don't, I don't really like that look. <laughs> So I've written a blog post. It's got three different options for how to adjust your length of your sleeve. Um, so I'm gonna put a link to that in the description box below. So if you're making a drop shoulder sweater or you just wanna read on how to adjust, um, adjust the length of a sleeve, then just pop over to that blog post and read, read it. So that'll be a resource available to you so that if you're making silver birch you can have the perfect fitting sleeves as well. Um, my book Forest, in both the print book and the ebook, there is a resources page that has links to all of my blog posts and video tutorials that you may find useful as you're making the projects in the book. So yeah, this there's a lot. There's a lot of resources available to you that I've been creating over time both here on my YouTube channel, in the tutorial section, and also on my blog on my website. So if you're somebody who likes blogs, you should go follow my blog. I, I use Feedly when I follow blogs. I just put the blog in my Feedly and then it shows up in my Feedly feed. Um, so you could follow my blog in whatever way you prefer to follow blogs. Anyway, so. That's Silver Birch. I really like this sweater. I'm not somebody who really wears loose fitting clothes a lot. When I was in my younger years, I like everything had to be super tight and form fitting. I was like teens and 20s. And now that I'm into my 30s, I'm starting to wear looser fitting clothes, but this is pretty loose for me. So this is with about 10 inches of positive ease. So this is pretty loose for me and I was really wondering if I was going to like it or if I was going to feel like I was you know, wearing a tent, but I really, really like it. Um, it's really cozy, it's really comfortable, uh, you, there's like no tight or constricting things. You can layer it over top of a dress, just throw it on and it doesn't pinch in the sleeves. It's just really, really comfortable to wear and I do really like it. I don't think it looks overly huge, even with 10 inches of positive ease, because I've got a slim fitting sleeve that 
fits perfectly and the neckline fits really nice. So those two things together make it so that it looks like it's a proper fit even though it's an oversized sweater. So hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully that makes sense to you. Um, but I really like it. It's a sport weight yarn so it's not super warm so it's really kind of perfect for the beginning of the cool weather when, before it gets really brutally cold. It, it gets really cold here, really, really cold here. Um, for those of you who garden, we are in zone, uh, gardening zone four, which is very cold. Um, for everyone else, it, that means it can get down to 30 or 40 degrees below zero Fahrenheit in the winter. Um, yeah. It's pretty chilly here. <laughs> So I probably won't wear this sweater in the depths of winter when it's really brutally cold because it is a sport weight yarn. It is wool and spun, so that makes it a little bit warmer and I'm gonna try it and see if it's warm enough. But generally in the winter, I, I have to dress really warm because I'm somebody who gets cold really easily. So I do like worsted weight sweaters and wool socks and wool slippers and yeah, I get cold. <laughs> I get really cold. But I could, on those really cold days, wear my silver birch and then just add the snowy shawl and be super cozy. So this is the snowy shawl, which is my next finished object. It is a worsted weight color work shawl that is knit in the round and then Steaked. You can see I'm not really practiced at putting on putting on shawls. This is my first proper shawl. Uh, when I first started knitting years ago, I made a shawl out of fingering weight yarn, um, but it was more like kind of like a scarf with a fat area in the middle. It wasn't like a proper shawl. So this is my first like proper shawl. I'm watching Andrea Mallory when she shows how to wear your shawls and I'm like okay that's how, that's how I put it on. So this is the snowy shawl. There, this will be cozy. I have wanted a really nice cozy shawl for the last few winters because it's so cold even with my warmer sweaters I just I just feel that cold just seeping into me and I just want more to put on. So this is going to be <laughs> worn a lot this winter. I'm gonna tuck that down. Maybe I'll just throw it sideways, look a little funky and cool. This is the snowy shawl. Um, I'm gonna sh take it off and show you, actually show you. Last episode, I think I showed you the very beginning of it. So it's knit in the round. You start here with a tab. I use a stockinette tab because I wanted this area right here to lay a little bit smoother than a garter stitch tab would. So it's basically the same thing except I did a little stockinette tab instead of garter stitch. So it starts with a tab and then you work out from there, out this way, this way and this way. It is worked as a triangle shape, but it's kind of a modified triangle shape. You increase every single round on the wingspan edge. So here, up here, and up here, and then you increase every other round down the center spine. In a normal triangular shawl, you increase every other row or round in both, on both the wingspan and the center spine. But when you increase every round on the wingspan, that gives you a shawl that grows lengthwise faster than it grows depthwise. So you can have a triangular shaped shawl that is nice and long, but it's not excessively deep. So hopefully that makes sense. Kind of hard to get the whole thing in, in camera here. So here it is, that's half of it. It uses the same inspiration as Snowy Pines and the Snowy Hat and Snowy Mittens and Ponderosa. They're all kind of the same inspiration that's snow falling on a forest of pine trees. So you can see here 
In the gray section, we have snow falling down on these little trees, and then it transitions into this really big snow section on the green background that's falling on these bigger trees, and then we have some snow underneath. And then it ends with a nice two by two ribbed border, which I really, really love the way a two by two rib border looks on a shawl. I just really love it. It's really polished and finished and I think it looks really cozy and I just love the way it looks. So here we go. Oh, that's most of it. When you're knitting it, it's in the round. So when you're knitting it, it's like this. So this area over here is where you steek. And you just knit round and round and round and round. The whole thing is charted, as color work usually is. Um, so if you wanted to knit this shawl, you would need to know how to read charts. But if you don't know how to read charts, go to my How to Knit Color Work tutorial in the tutorial section, and that tutorial also covers how to read a color work chart. There are a few rounds in here that use um, three color knitting. I've also got a tutorial on how to knit with three colors, so you can find that tutorial in the tutorial section as well. Um, this is not a good shawl if you are a beginning color work knitter. Do not start with this one. This isn't a good one to start with because it's got some longer floats. So this is the back. I know you want to see how it looks in the back. Here's the back. You have some longer floats, so it's going to be more difficult to maintain an even tension if you don't already know how to maintain an even tension while you're knitting color work. So this is a good project for if you have some experience knitting color work. You can see I messed up. I messed up on one right here. This one's way too loose. But this is a wool and spun yarn, so it's nice and sticky. And um, this is just going to be loose on the back side. But I'm not worried about the stitches on the front, like stretching out and becoming wonky, because this is a nice grippy yarn. I haven't told you what I used. This is Derrera Natura Gilead, which is their worsted weight yarn. Um, you can see the gray. This gray is the same as this gray. So these, this is the sport weight of the same yarn used here, and this is the sport weight, worsted weight, same yarn, just different weights. They come in all the same colors, which made it possible for me to you to um, create a whole cohesive collection here. So this gray is Goland. This gray is Goland. Um, yeah, so it's Goland for the gray, the white is Bolio, and the dark green is For Eat. This is a really nice yarn. If you're in Europe, you can find it, I think, pretty much anywhere. If you are not in Europe, if you're in the United States, you can find it at Shop La Mercerie, and you can find it at, there's some place in Canada, I don't remember the name of it, but you can also order it directly from Durer Natura, and um, it comes pretty quick. I, I ordered some yarn from them as I was making this whole collection, and it came in just a couple weeks from France, so it wasn't long at all. Anyway, back to the shawl. So when you're done with the shawl, you're going to cut it here. First, you're going to reinforce it with the crochet steak reinforcement. There's a tutorial for that in the tutorial section, also linked in the book, and will be linked in the pattern when the individual pattern comes out. And then you pick up stitches on the right side and you knit. I can't remember how many rows you knit, but basically you knit long enough that you have this little piece of fabric that you can um, fold over the cut part, and then you sew it down on the wrong side, which it looks nice and neat. It doesn't look sloppy and messy, like you can see this is where it's joined. It looks nice and neat. It's a nice finish on it, and yeah. When, um, I'm gonna have to stop and restart because my camera only goes for 20 minutes. So hang on. I'm back again. Um, I didn't have a natural stopping point, I'm sorry. Um, when I wrote the pattern, I did the yardage estimates as the amount you need to knit the body of the shawl. And then there's also the estimate for the amount of yarn you need to work the crochet steak reinforcement. 
And then there's also an estimate of the amount of yarn you need to use to do the steep covering so that if you're working with some scrap yarn or you only have a little bit of a color left and you're not quite sure if it's gonna make it all the way, then you can just weigh your yarn, figure out how many yards you have left, and um, then you'll know if it's enough yardage to do the steep reinforcement or to do this little um, finishing bit. So I wanted to know that when I got to the end, I was like, I don't have a whole lot of this green left in this ball of yarn. Will I have enough to do the covering? And so I thought, you know what, people are going to want to know that too. So I put that in the yard estimate so you can easily see that and figure that out yourself. I really like using up all the yarn for something and not having a bunch left over. Although, as a designer, having a bunch of yarn left over is really handy when it comes to swatching for new ideas. So, this is the snowy shawl. Isn't it stunning? Oh, I love it so much. I really, really love this here. This, um, this lice stitch, the little snowflakes on the, the white snowflakes on the dark background. I really like how it looks. I really, really love it. So, here's the whole back. I like the way floats look. I think it looks cool. Um, you could wear it backwards, I suppose, if you really wanted to. I know I'm gonna wear this a ton. Just an absolute ton. It's, it's like a, I should have put it in the fair and, um, and try to win a ribbon for it. I thought about it, but then I didn't want to go on the day you, you're supposed to submit your open class entry. So I was like, hmm, I bet you I'd get a blue ribbon for it. But I didn't, I didn't go put it in. Um, if you're not sure what I'm talking about when I say the fair, here in the United States, we have county fairs where um, kids can go show their 4-H animals or their 4-H projects, but there's also open class where you can enter a wide variety of things, including your handcrafts, and then they're judged um, and uh, given awards. You can enter your garden produce or your baking or photography or painting or Legos. There. It's, yeah, it's a little bit, I think it's folded over a little bit funny in the back. I'll get better at it as I get more practice. So there's the snowy shawl. It's so cozy. And this yarn, this Durham Nature Juliet, it's a woolen spun yarn, but it has a nice, uh, a nice drapiness and softness to it after you block it. It's, it's a really nice fabric. It doesn't get like stiff and unwieldy. It's really, it's a really nice yarn, you guys. Um, anyway, so there's the snowy shawl. I feel like it's bunched up really weird right here. Is it? Maybe it's not. Maybe I'll loosen it up a little bit. Maybe I've got it too tight. Cover up more of my chest and be a little cozier. There. Okay, now the next finished object from Forest, this is gonna be the last project I show you from Forest, and that is the mittens. Um, this, this pattern is called Alder. When I was making the mittens, I wanted to use the leftover yarn from Red Cedar, which is a colorwork sweater in the collection. I don't have it handy, so I can't show it to you. But um, this is Durham Nature Ulysse, so it's a sport weight yarn. It only uses a little bit of um, yarn, so you can use the leftovers. That's... Hold on, I'm being called. I'm being summoned by sick children. <laughs> okay, I'm back. Um, we were talking about the mittens. Alder. Um, so Alder uses Durham Nature Ulysse, which is the sport weight yarn, and it's the same yarn that's used for Silver Birch, which is the one I'm wearing, and also Red Cedar, which is the colorwork sweater. So you can take your yarn you have left over from Red Cedar, because when you knit a colorwork sweater, you always have some of the contrast colors left over. And you can take that yarn and you could knit um, these mittens. 
older. Oh, I should show you the, the back side of it. So this is the palm and this is the um, hand. It doesn't use very much yarn to knit a pair of mittens and there are five sizes? Four sizes? No, there's five sizes. Five sizes of this mitten from something that would fit a toddler all the way up to, this is the second largest size. There's one size larger than this. Um, I have rather large hands, um, so I think, I think I'll cover pretty much everybody can have a pair of mittens, a pair of older mittens, um, anyway. So here's the mittens. They're color work, they're charted. Every single size is fully charted and there's two charts for each one, one for the right hand one for the left hand, because you have the uh, thumb coming out of different spots, so I just did I just did a chart for each size. Here they are. Um, so how they're made is you start with the cuff, you knit the cuff, and then you start into the color work, and the thumb is a gusset that grows out of the side stitches. So you have these this column of side stitches here, and where the thumb comes out, it just grows out of the center of the side stitches. So it, it looks really, it looks really neat and um, polished the way the thumb grows out of the side of the mitten. And then you just, you know, knit the thumb out the side. The thumb matches, the color work on the thumb matches the color work on the palm, which is a really, really simple vertical stripe pattern. Um, and then on the back you have these stars so this star is the same star that's used on the juniper hat and the juniper cowl, except I have adjusted it a little bit. So for some of the sizes, you only have a single column of, si of stars. So sizes one through three, you have a single column of stars, but the stars are bigger than this one here. I've made them a little bit wider. There wasn't enough room to do a double column of stars, but um, depending on the size, I have a little more room to make the star wider. So it uses the same star motif, but it's kind of expanded or cut back and it's used singly or doubly, depending on how much room I have on the mitten. And that way I could offer this mitten in five sizes. Um, this is inspired by a traditional Norwegian selbu mitten, which if you look up patterns for selbu mittens, they're just one size. It's really difficult to grade them because you don't have a lot of room. Like between the sizes, you'll only shift this, you know, back side of the mitten by a few stitches wider or smaller. So it's not like you can put more repeats in, especially when you have such a large motif that you're using, like a really big star. It's really hard to adjust that patterning for the size. So it's kind of hard to, um, to grade these, this style of mitten. So the mittens are not going to be identical. The sizes will not be identical. The color work is going to be a little bit different, but it's gonna look good in every size. It's gonna look adorable. You can see the test knitter projects on Ravelry, and you can see how the different sizes look um, from the test knitter projects. But this is size four <clears throat> that's here, and this is what it looks like. They all have the same palm and thumb motif. It's just um, the star has to change a little bit between the sizes of the mittens on the back side. And then it's finished with a little bit up here. Anyway, so this is alder, the mittens. Um, the Snowy Shawl, Silver Birch, Alder, all of these designs are going to be exclusive to Forest, the print book or the ebook for a little while and then I'm going to start releasing them as individual patterns over the course of the winter. But if you want to knit them now, you need to snag the ebook or the pre-order the print book because that's the, um, the quickest way you're going to get the patterns so you can cast on. Um, at the end of this podcast episode, I'm going to share some photos from our photo shoot and uh, maybe even some video snippets from the photo shoot so you can see all of the designs that are in this project or in this, um, in this book, <laughs> in this book. 
so that you know what's in it and you can also find it uh, the the listing for the book on my website which there's a link in the description box below and if you get on Ravelry and you look at the listing of the ebook on Ravelry there's pattern pages for each of the individual patterns and you can see all of the details there all the yardage all the sizes everything is on there so there are links to that down below this is older all of the pieces go really really well together like every single pattern from forest goes really nicely with every single other pattern in forest even when you're mixing textures and color work and the different color work projects they all look really really good together so I think I'm going to maybe do a newsletter or blog post probably only one single one I don't think it would need a series but um, on how to create a cohesive hand knit wardrobe so that you can mix and match all your pieces together so you can wear your shawls with your sweaters and hats and mittens that go together because um, it's really nice because I, I can wear everything together in different combinations and it all looks amazing and fantastic which you can see from um, the photos the photos that we took which I'll share later so that's all the projects from Forest that I'm going to show you today. Now I'm going to stop here and I'm going to put in the video of the frost hat and frost flower mittens and then I will come back again to say goodbye. I've worked with Bare Naked Wools quite a few times and they specialize in American grown, milled, very natural fiber yarns. They don't dye them, they don't do any harsh processing. It's all very much so just normal wool in the colors that the fiber comes in naturally. So they have a range of whites, creams, browns, grays, but it's just all those natural fiber colors. But every year they do a fundraiser called the Red Scar Fundraiser and they raise money to fund scholarships for foster kids who are getting launched into the world with no traditional source of support, no family, nobody to fall back on. So this, um, this fundraiser raises money for scholarships to help them get a start in life. I participated in it last year and I'm participating in it again this year. I've already shown off the yarn, but now it's actually knit up into something. So this yarn that this mitten and also this hat, the yarn that these patterns use is exclusive to the fundraiser and it's in limited quantities. It is a merino, this is a worsted weight merino. I believe it's also in a fingering weight version. Pretty sure it's fingering weight. There's another weight, but I'm, I'm not 100% sure if it's fingering or DK weight, but I'm like 90% sure it's fingering. But this one is the worsted weight. So the white is just the natural undyed color and then the red is dyed by, I think it's alyssum fibers. I don't have it with me now. So this will be available in the fundraiser when it launches. I'm not sure when it's gonna launch. It'll happen sometime this fall. If you sign up for my newsletter, I will of course email you and let you know that the fundraiser is on. It's not just me. You're not just getting patterns from me. So there's this exclusive yarn that you can buy and all the proceeds from the yarn go to the fundraiser. And then there's a bunch of designers, myself included, who design patterns. And most of the patterns are small, like hats, mittens, scarves, shawls, um, small accessory type things, things that are perfect for Christmas knitting. And all the proceeds from those pattern sales goes to the fundraiser as well. So I don't make any money off of this pattern while it's in the fundraiser. At the end of this year, when the pattern rights come back to me, then I'll put it in my store. But for the duration of the fundraiser, 100% of the money from this pattern, also this pattern, will go to the fundraiser. So let me tell you about the pattern, first of all. So I'm calling these the frost flower mittens because there's a big flower. Um, first, let's start with the hat. So I knit the hat first. And I came up, first up, I was going to make trees. I was thinking of a wreath, like a, a Christmas wreath, and I was thinking I would make a colorwork motif that looked like, like the boughs of a wreath, like 
encircling around the hat and as I was working along in my stitch, uh, my uh, charting software, which I use Stitch Mastery, um, it ended up as snowflakes. <laughs> I meant to make trees. I meant to make tree branches and instead I made snowflakes. So um, I was like, you know what, I really like that. And I couldn't think of what to name it. So you can see this, this stitch pattern that I'm obsessed with. I told you I was obsessed with it here. It, it showed up back here again. But I made this beautiful little snowflake motif. And then you have the snow up on top. And the mixed color pom-pom, which I asked my followers on Instagram what color they thought I should use for the pom-pom. And red and white together won. So it's a red and white together pom-pom. Anyway, as I was blocking this hat, which is still unnamed and had no clue what to name it, hat, um, I was looking at it because I ha I soak it. Since it's red and white, I soak it in cold water for like two minutes. And then um, I put it over a ball. We have a lot of balls in this house because there are a lot of children in this house. So I put it over a ball and then I set it on top of a vase so that it's like suspended in the air, stretched over the ball. That way your crown, the, the crown, the shaping in the crown is nicely filled out as it's blocking so you don't end up with rumpled spots in your crown. Um, as I saw it sitting there on my table, I was like, this looks like frost to me, like really heavy hoar frost. Right? That's what it looks like to me. So I thought, you know what, I should name that hat Frost. I'll put it on so you can see it. It's after sunset, so we might be losing light, so I'm trying not to go too slow. So here it is. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing, because I can't see what I'm doing. I thought it looks like frost, so I decided to name the hat Frost. And then as I was doing the mittens, I was going to take this same motif right here and just plunk it up the center of the mitten but then I had a little more width in this mitten in this size than um, so this this cross here is bigger than this cross here and then as I put those together I was like well there's a whole bunch of space right there because I had one of these right there I was like I could just put a giant flower in there and so I did and I think it looks fantastic so these, these mittens are going to be called frost flowers, or frost flower, singular instead of plural. So that's what I did. So they are coordinating patterns, but they're not identical. So you can see that, hopefully. Hopefully you can see that. So these are the frost flower mittens. And for the palm, I did the exact same thing as I did for alder, because I was running on a very, very small amount of time and I did not want to reinvent the wheel. So it has the exact same palm and thumb gusset as um, Alder does. So I'll put it on for you. These ones are a little bit small for me. I'm not making these for myself and I was, I have really large hands for a woman. If there was like two or three more rounds in length, it would fit me perfectly, but it's a little bit small. So this is what it looks like on. Huh? we go. Do they look so good? I think these are beautiful. I absolutely love this. It's just stunning. This would be perfect for Christmas gifting, don't you think? You know, wouldn't you be delighted to open a package on Christmas Day and this is inside? Anyway. Um, so yeah, I still have to write up these patterns. Um, they need the sample today. They're giving me a, a little bit of an extension because I was not able to get it done in time. But I'm going to send these off tomorrow morning bright and early as fast as I can because I, I literally finished the mittens earlier today and then I blocked them on a chair sitting out in the sunshine in my yard so that they would dry instantly. Um, and they dried within a few hours instead of taking, you know, the days it would take inside the house. So these are going to go off to Bare Naked Wools. 
and I'll finish writing up the pattern later this week and then hopefully get the test knit rolling along so that I can get the pattern to them in time. So this is the set. Frost is the hat and Frost Flower is the mitten. By the way, you see this pom-pom? If you want to know how to make a glorious, glorious pom-pom for your hats, I have a pom-pom making tutorial on this channel down in the tutorial section. But in case you don't want to listen to the whole thing, the key to getting your pom-poms nice and puffy is to steam them. So after I cut it and kind of trim it to make it even, I get the kettle going on my stove. Make sure you don't hold your hand in the steam. <laughs> I, I always, so the string that I use to tie the pom-pom, I make sure to leave it a little bit long and then I wrap it around my cooking tongs and I hold it in the steam with my tongs so I don't burn my hand. And then you steam the pom-pom and all of the cut ends kind of open up and puff up and then you have a really super fluffy pom-pom. So steam your pom-poms. Anyway, so these are off to Bare Naked Wools tomorrow. It looks like it just, it's just stunning. Absolutely stunning. The reason why I couldn't get it done in time for the deadline is we have family visiting from Japan. Well, we had family visiting from Japan. They went, they headed back um, this morning. So I was very busy with family visit for the last couple of weeks, so I couldn't really um, knit much, particularly not a um, little more complicated color work mitten because we were driving a lot and visiting a lot. So these, these took me a little while to make. It took me about three hours to knit each mitten, which isn't too long, but it's three hours of time you need to be kind of sitting still and able to focus on what you're doing. So. They'll be in the Red Scarf fundraiser. Hopefully that uh, wasn't too grainy for you guys watching that video clip. Um, the frost hat and frost flowers mittens, the patterns for those will be available in the Red Scarf fundraiser, um, which is done through Bare Naked Wools. If you sign up, it's, it's Bare Naked Wools and Knit Spot. Anne Hansen, who owns Bare Naked Wools and is Knit Spot runs that fundraiser. So if you sign up for my newsletter in the link in my bio, I will send out an email when all of those patterns are available from the Red Scar fundraiser. Um, so make sure you sign up for my email newsletter. It's also, it's a value packed email that you get. I like to send out um, more educational emails. Like I just recently finished up a four part series on sweater fit which you can now find it on my blog. So it goes out to newsletter subscribers. And then two weeks later, when I send out a new email, I put the old email from two weeks before on my blog as a blog post. So you can find those now on my blog. My blog is a fantastic place to go. I have a link to it in my bio if you want to go read my blog posts. Um, so those patterns won't be available. I think it until the end of October, but I'm not entirely sure of the date. Um, and then if you want to get any of the patterns from Forest, which all these three are in Forest, um, you will need to buy the ebook or pre-order the print book. The print book is supposed to be done and shipped to me on the 27th of September, and it is, today is, Today is the 23rd of August, so about a month until the books are done and sent to me, and then I'll ship them to you right away. They will get to you early October. Um, so uh, the day that they're shipped to me, the 27th of September, is the day they leave the printer to come to me, and then I'll take a little time to come to me, and then I have to pack them and ship them to you, which will also take a little time. So early October, you'll get your print books in the mail. From me. Um, a bunch of people have already bought some, so thank you very much. If you're one of those people who has already bought a book, thank you so much for buying a book. Um, and now we're going to go into some photos and video of the projects from the book so you can see all the beautiful pictures and everything, even if you don't want to leave YouTube. Um, so 
Thank you very much for being here and watching my podcast and listening to me talk about all my projects and everything that I'm making. Next episode, I will have some um, works in progress for you, but this episode was all just finished objects. So subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of my future episodes, which will hopefully be more regular now that we are going to be getting back into a routine after all of the fun of summer and also sign, uh, subscribe so that you don't miss any of the new tutorials that I um, release here on YouTube. So thank you so much for watching and enjoy seeing all the pictures of the forest projects um, that are coming to you in just a second and uh, yeah happy knitting.